It's Comics Are Great, the visual storytelling show recorded live every other Wednesday at the Ann Arbor District Library in lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan, comics.aadl.org. And this is the show where we talk about making comics, uh, publishing comics, self-publishing comics, making web comics, drawing, writing, all the things that uh, surround this medium that drives us all crazy. My name is Jersey Drozd, cartoonist and teaching artist. With me today is re returning to the show. I don't remember how many appearances this has been, Ryan Estrada of ryanestrada.com. You, you just well, collect them you, recently. You didn't pay me the last time, so I just waited a while. You know? <laughs> I'm hoping I'm getting paid this time. You know what's funny? I don't get paid to do this show. I actually get emails. Well, it's from... good exposure. <laughs> <laughs> it is good exposure. Oh, wait. Look at my YouTube stats. No, it's not. Uh, no, it's funny. I get emails from people sometimes saying, like, you got the best job in the world because you just get to go and talk about comics to other creators. I'm like, well... It is a job, but I don't get any money for it. So I'm one of the bad guys, as we're going to find out today. But um, I don't remember how many times you've been on the show, Ryan, but you just collected all of your you know, podcast appearances, so maybe you have an idea. Uh, I think uh, three or four times. Okay. One of them was the audio-only episode and a few from the library. And marketing is just talking to dudes was one of the better ones. And then, yeah, Let's Fight was another episode you were on. They'll all be linked in the show notes at comicsaregreat.com slash CAG84. But Ryan Estrada, for those who are new to the show and have not met Ryan Estrada yet, um, ryanestrada.com, the newly minted, polished, buffed, and retooled ryanestrada.com, an amazing-looking site that has everything that you do because you do a lot because you're a cartoonist and an adventurer, literally. Yes. Try to keep it easy for everybody. Just go right there. You see everything that I do. I got videos. I got comics. I got graphic novels. I got links to all my blogs where I post adventure stories. All the good stuff's there. Yeah, and um, we can highlight one of the latest comics that people should read is the one where you fought a typhoon and won. A true story. Where you met? I mean Hitler. the uh, the tsunami. A tsunami. That's what it was. Yeah, tsunami. And and you met Hitler cats. Mm -hmm. And uh, you honestly thought you were going to die that night. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that, that would be the one I would, I would recommend people go check out first. And then there's uh, Aki Alliance and a bunch of other comics that you put on there uh, for free. Download high-res PDFs for your iPad and tablets and everything. But what we're going to talk about today is you got this thing, uh, this Twitter account, twitter.com slash exposure underscore TXT, exposure text. Uh, what is this thing, Ryan, that you've been doing? For Exposure Text is a Twitter account where I go around to all of the uh, message boards and um, all these places where people are looking for artists to work for them. And 99.9% .9 of them are looking for artists to work for them for no money whatsoever for the exposure. And reading through them, I realized that there's some really, really hilarious quotes. <laughs> and I mean, it... I, I'm, I'm posting so much about this idea. It sounds like I, I'm like some lawyer advocating for artist rights, but really I just think these people are really, really funny <laughs> the way they have no concept of how ridiculous they sound and how much they're trying to take advantage of people. And so I, I take the funniest uh, 140 character bits and, uh, and for longer ones, we sometimes do dramatic readings and just kind of show people the type of people that are trying to take advantage of you and what to avoid. This this is such a Riot Estrada thing to do is that it turns into this great movement. And it's got it got a lot of uptake and followers like right mm -hmm. away. Like the, you you struck a chord with cartoonists everywhere when you did this thing. Um so it like it's like, oh Ryan's out there fighting the good fight. But I love that it just starts out with these guys are really funny. <laughs> they need to yeah, be like uh, what I find really weird like the reason I wanted to start a new project like this is that, you know, it, the things I work on are like long graphic novels and um, I don't have a lot to update. And I, I wanted a new project because I, I used to fill my time with doing commissions. But now that I'm doing my own book full time, I wanted something to kind of keep updates coming and keep me busy. And the reason that I quit doing commissions is I couldn't stand reading emails like this. <laughs> and now as soon as I need something to fill my time, I fill it with doing nothing but reading messages like this. <laughs> But now that I don't, now that I'm not the one that has to answer them, yeah, they're hilarious. <laughs> when I have to type a response, they're not funny at all. But now I can just enjoy it, and I actually get upset when I I, I read a really funny one that I see we're willing to pay. I'm like, oh, so good. Now I can't quote it. 
<laughs> uh, I've got a highlight reel of some of the better ones that that you posted mm-hmm. recently. Um, uh, I will and and can take some some criticism, but it is not the artist's job to be my editor. Just draw. Here's another one. Actually, scratch that. We're not willing to pay anymore. We're here to help ourselves and fellow artists. We want to do art for art's sake. And here's my number one pick. Trade massage for website. (laughs) I need full service and ongoing support. I need it running now. Please no calls from those who want remuneration. (laughs) Yeah, some of my favorites I have... uh... You will not be paid. Work is done for free. This project is likely to take two to three years, so be mentally prepared to put yourself down for that. (laughs) Or uh, if minor compensation is required, we can talk over Kickstarter to keep your face full of cake or whatever it is you need so bad. (laughs) Uh, I mean, there's tons. There's guys that uh, can't pay you because they're saving up for a trip to Japan. Uh, Talking about how you'll go down in history as the designer of their logo. Uh, One of my favorite ones is one where... uh, they're looking for third world artists since they can't pay anyone and it might as well be from a third world country. Oh, wow. Uh, and the the most legendary one is, this is a terrible economy and wallet vampires like you make projects more attainable than usual. <laughs> wallet vampires. Speaking of wallet vampires, we've got a 15 second clip that I want to play uh, and it's from a seven minute video from one of the uh, interpretive readings Okay, everybody can see Ryan right now. We can see that he is a clean-cut, well-spoken, you know, he's a good-looking guy. But you do such a magnificent job of of, uh, inhabiting the character of the people who you're doing the interpretive readings of. And I'm wondering if if Matt or Tom can pull up that clip. We'll just uh, sit mum for 15 seconds. Ryan, you won't see the video, but everybody else will. But maybe it is. Or maybe you guys honestly don't know when you're trying to tear down someone's hard work by making it seem like nothing. (laughs) And there you go. <laughs> so that's Ryan throwing his computer against a wall and uh, like just being the sweaty, uh, intense guy. But I love that there's even the post-its in the foreground with like the crossed out wallet vampires and other messages against people who actually want to be paid for their work. Um, but everybody should go watch those videos. The interpretive readings, they're fantastic. Um, and we'll link to those in the show notes as well. So, okay, so let's let's have a discussion on this, Ryan. And I want to play the devil's advocate on this um, because I could see somebody. We can laugh at these guys, but I can I can look at the the. I don't want to say I can understand their worldview, but I could see how somebody would be bewildered by their arguments. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you say, "How is doing spec work any different than than pursuing a self publishing strategy?" Uh, you look at the web comics new media model and how monetization works there. Uh, you do a whole bunch of posts on your website. You 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 know they say don't sell T-shirts until you got five thousand fans. How do you get five thousand fans? You start making free comic updates, and how do you make money off of that? You know advertising, donations, subscriptions, Kickstarter, merchandise. Uh, we talked about this in uh, episode twenty nine of the Comics Are Great with Eli Nyberg or ComicsAreGreat dot com slash cag two nine. So here's my first thing they'll throw at you. You know it's like. If I'm doing web comics, I'm already doing spec work, right? Yeah. Our, the thing is, artists do free work all the time. They don't need the help <laughs> to get free work, all right? Um, in doing this, I want to make it clear that I'm in no way saying artists should never work for free. Artists should be paid for every line they draw. Working as an artist means hours, days, decades of nonstop unpaid work. Um but hopefully the things that you're doing are things that are for yourself or things that you're passionate about. Uh, sometimes, you know, I, I have done work for free for other people. I've done guest comics. Uh, I spent a whole summer working at um, an animation studio. Um, just, But those were things that I personally was passionate about. And sometimes two people's interests will line up. But that's like a marriage. Uh, th- these are people who already know each other, who know who believe in each other, who know what each other's business plan is and or lack of business plan. And, you know, like, like I said, it's like proposing marriage, but you don't propose marriage by going on a message board and being like, I want someone to marry me. They better cook and clean for me every day. (laughs) Reply in the thread. You better be a good cook and I better not hear any complaining. You just, you just do what I, that's what these things sound like. 
Actually, that's a that's a really good w- lens to look at mm-hmm. any kind of job pitch uh, or mm-hmm. a, a collaboration pitch. Um, but I want I want to get a well. Maybe we should just go through the excuses that you wrote down because I had a bunch of notes here, but you s- sent this terrific list of excuses and then uh, redefinitions. Yeah, uh, there's like thing. there's like ten kinds of tweets that I have, like, and they're they just repeat the same. The, there's a lot that I don't even quote anymore because they all every ad sound. I'm like, did I read this before? No, they just type the exact same thing. <laughs> and so yeah, if you want to play the devil's advocate and yeah, advocate okay. and give me some so, of these excuses. So okay, I got this killer idea, and uh, nobody's ever done it before. It it hits on a lot of the hot things in the zeitgeist right now. Uh, mm-hmm. It's bound to be ma- uh, made into a movie with Russell Crowe. Uh, it, it it really I think it's got a ton of potential and I'm really behind it and uh, it's going to be a big thing I don't have any money to pay you Ryan but I'll tell you what when this thing hits big and it says art by Ryan Estrada huge amount of exposure get in on this train yeah uh, it's sure it's going to be huge but like how many 100 million dollar movies bombed this year these are these are movies that have an entire group of people who are paid millions to just figure out what's going to be the next big thing and how many times have they failed miserably this year? And what makes you think that you know what's going to be the best big thing? You can't decide that. The audience decides that. And even if it does become big, how many um, how many times have you uh, seen a name in the credits and then gone home and Googled it? <laughs> or like just the something becoming the next big, big thing is not something that you can choose. And especially the people that I hear making these arguments – they're immediately after that you'll they'll enter oh it's about zombies or <laughs> uh when I, here's another tweet that i i had um 50 of ownership of derivative materials such as movies video games action figures board games etc the story is what if the avengers had taken on justice league <laughs> Wow, that's that's a pretty big merchandising engine I can yeah. get in on, right? Like, dude, this is a dude who has no concept of how like he, he he's sure all this is gonna be made, but doesn't think that I don't actually own these characters, do I? I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you put together uh we'll have to link to this in the show notes. You put together like a, a pie chart of the different categories of for exposure to, uh, underscore text tweets, like what categories of uh stories they're writing and what was what was one of the biggest ones? It was uh, with zombies, wasn't it? Zombies with a twist. Zombies with a twist. Superheroes with a twist. Dark Alice in Wonderland with a twist. It's just like Bleach, no twist. <laughs> uh, one I didn't put in there that I've noticed a lot since then is um, R-rated Pokemon comics. Uh. A lot of those. And then what was the last one? Uh, I forget. There was one more. But what was the twist? The twist was the, the twist sp- was it's dark. It's dark. <laughs> it's a dark version of a thing that everybody's familiar with. That's a pretty good twist. Uh, but you know, your name is in a credit. Now you've got some a resume piece at least, right? You can go to a bigger company that pays and say, "Hey, I did work on this thing." So even if it's not exposure, at least it's a credit. Yeah. It's yeah. It's a credit advertising that you worked for free, and that other people should expect you to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, even if it's the viewers seeing your name, um, you know, how can you name anyone that designed a logo? Right. Yeah, that's what I think about because, like, I, I I stick around for the credits sometimes for categories that I care about. But then again, we're talking about passion. But I, I think of that Harlan Ellison uh, pay the writer video that gets passed around whenever this topic comes up, and I yeah. just I just posted it today on my feeds and I'll link to it in the show notes as well. Okay. But one of the things he said is like, when have you ever seen the credits? Like, Oh, uh, that guy said some smart stuff or he designed a really cool thing. I wonder if he's written anything. I should go to the store and buy the thing that he wrote. Yeah. Yeah. As, as someone who always watches the credits, as someone who had my wife trying to drag me out of the theater like two hours ago, cause I was watching the credits. I can tell you, nobody watches the credits. Everybody thinks I'm a weirdo. Cause I watch it. I have like the entire cleaning staff sitting there looking at their watches, giving me dirty looks. Like, people don't watch the credits unless they're me. Well, yeah, unless you're a fellow creative nerd who actually yeah. cares about that kind of stuff. But, yeah, most people aren't going like, oh, you know, thank God that guy did the Foley work in this film, right? <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Okay, well, here's here's the other problem, Ryan. Um, 
you're an, you're you have a sense of empathy. You you care about your fellow man. I'm Poe. I do not have a ton of money to be thrown around. So, you know, just like you, I'm not making any money on this. This is a passion project. You know, it's it's uh so if I don't make money, why should you make money on this thing? Let's don't be selfish. Yeah, what a lot of people say is that it's a they're they're trying to say it's it's just a hobby, you know? Why why should I pay for a hobby as if no one has ever paid for a hobby? In their entire life. That's why hobby shops are all, you know, you can just walk in and take whatever you want. And like, and why a rich guy can go and be like, what, what do you mean I got to pay for a yacht? I'm not making any money off of it. It's just a hobby. I like driving yachts around. <laughs> so gibby. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, it's, it's weird how the word hobby, um, and I think we got some legacy baggage on this thing where it's it's considered a trivial endeavor. And so mm-hmm. you shouldn't make any kind of money off of this. The, 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 it's devalued somehow. But like you just said, there's hobby stores where you go to get the premium supplies to make your hobby. Like if you, if you make toy ships in a bottle, you're not making it out of trash. You're getting yeah. the parts from someplace, right? Stuff's expensive. Yeah, actually, yeah, it is. As as a guy who's married to a woman who collects tiny miniature meats that are like really well crafted, the good ones, like a miniature ham, is like thirty bucks, man. <laughs> it's not free, and that's just to put on a wall and go. Like, I love looking at little hams. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got a cool wife. Uh, but okay, here's another thing, Ryan. Um, Look, I've spent five years writing this manuscript. I have busted my back on this thing. And it's going to be a lot of work as we work for the next two years on this project that makes no money. I'm working too, so it's not like I'm asking you just to do everything for me. Yeah, this one comes up because a lot of the people quoted on the site happen to be writers. And that's because, first of all, that, that happens to be who it goes to a lot of these forums is people who've written a comic and want someone to make it. And secondly, because they're the funniest people to quote, because they're writers, so they, their mind goes in weird places when they're writing. They go off on tangents and talk about cake instead of the project. <laughs> but um, you know, it, I, I I wrote a whole post about this because it a lot of people thought I was insulting comic writers, but the fact that people are comic writers has nothing to do with the project. It's you know, the fact that you wrote it isn't your get out of paying the artist free card. It's you know, the reason you're contacting me isn't because you're the writer. It's because you're the producer of the project. You're the one that is trying to make this project exist. Um, you know, instead of choosing to submit it to someone, try and sell it to someone, uh, write it out as a short story or a novel, you've chosen to make this into a comic book and you need someone else to do that for you. So, like I said, it's not your get out of paying for it free card. No one owes you that way that you want your work presented. It, it is. This is one of the more, I think, sinister uh, w- twists on the whole idea of trying to devalue somebody else's work by saying, like, look, I'm working, too, and I'm devaluing it. What's your problem? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh mm-hmm. We're all working hard here. Quit your complaining. Quit trying to be, uh, oh, look at Mr. High and Mighty, who thinks that he's worth money. Who do you, you know, hey, hey, Prince Albert and can. how come you're being so, so highfalutin about this? That is yeah. such a, a great way to make a young and insecure person uh, feel rotten about putting value yeah. on their work, right? And not that the writers are, that are doing this are trying to do that. There's some pe- other people, there are some people who, you can tell are specifically trying to make make people feel that way but most of the people just they just have a story they want to tell and they you know these days it's very hard to sell a story to a uh um uh you know like marvel isn't taking pitches you know they they have their own stuff they have their own writers you it's very hard to find a place to sell a comic script and it's hard to figure out what to do with it um but it 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 takes a writer just as much work to get their name out there and make people want to read their stuff as it does an artist. Okay, going back to what you just said about it's hard to pitch. Okay, Ryan, mm-hmm. let's go back to my dream project here about zombies with a dark twist with Alice in Wonderland um, and Bleach characters show up. Uh, I can get this put in front of editors 
And, you know, uh, Marvel, real Marvel editors are going to see your work when they look at this pitch. And I'll be out there fighting for this thing. I'm going to go to every convention in the country, and I'm going to talk with everybody to get this seen by them. So, come on, get in on this thing. Um, there's a website that I recommend everyone go to. It, uh, it's an article called The Submission Guidelines for Every Comic and Manga Publisher in the Universe. Um, you can Google it, but it's at, uh, optimumwound.com and that's all you need. You can do that yourself. You don't need some middleman that usually now one of the most popular things we've quoted was actually a guy that worked at Marvel and knew Marvel editors. Um, <laughs> but most of the people who say that, like, they're like, yeah, I'll just, I'll just send it to Marvel. As I said, Marvel does not take pitches. And if you think you're going to send it to them that means you have done no research whatsoever on the industry at all and the fact that this guy is your representative is at the at the your best thing you can hope for is that they're going to throw it away and not look at it worst case scenario they're going to look at it and be like look at these idiots they have no idea how comics work (laughs) so if you want to show yourself to editors you can totally show it to editors without this guy and the the people who actually do have ins and uh, know the editors and work for the editors and they have no excuse not to pay you. <laughs> that's yeah, that's true. But okay, uh, this this art thing. You let me ask you this, Ryan. You enjoy drawing. I take it. Yes, it's fun. I I enjoy drawing things that I enjoy drawing. Okay, well. We'll start there. You you would well, well, you enjoy drawing things that you enjoy drawing. I, I, I can spin a few things into this project that you might get a real kick out of drawing. Uh, I read the kind. You like the werewolves? I could put a werewolf in this Alice in Wonderland zombie fan, uh, slasher fic. Um, and it's fun. It won't take you that long. And I know for a fact that you draw fast, bro. So, hey, let's, let's work together on this. Did you see my this. comics are great episode about that? <laughs> speed comicking yes that's mm-hmm. right so i've got evidence here it won't take that long it, it's it, it'll be a trivial amount of time to work on this thing let's let's get together and make this comic happen there's a lot of them that say it'll be done in a few minutes if it's if it's that fast why haven't you made it <laughs> because I... it doesn't take just a few minutes to make it like even if there is a thing that takes a few minutes to make it also takes a few minutes to uh to get the materials ready. It takes a few minutes to scan. It takes a few minutes to color. It takes a few minutes to export. It takes a few minutes to upload. Like it, at the very least, if you're doing a bare minimum of work, like one single sketch, it's going to take at least an hour. It's probably going to take a lot more than that. And beyond that, it takes the years of practice and preparation it's taken to get where you can do that in a few minutes. No, it's all God-given uh, talent, Ryan. It's just you were just born with the gift. I've seen it. It looks like magic to me. So just do your magic trick, chop, chop. <laughs> yeah, I should start posting some of my early comments. Not very, not very good. Okay, well, look, I tried talking sense to you. Um, it's clear that you just care more about money than art. I am an artist. I have a burning desire to express myself. And if it lands somewhere, it lands somewhere. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But making the thing is way more... I'm trying to do your uh, interpretive reading kind of style here. (laughs) Making the thing is way more important to me than big boatloads of cash. I'll see you later, you dirty capitalist, you Ayn Rand objectivist who only thinks about money. I'm an artist. Awesome, man. Make your thing. I'm over here making mine. (laughs) Boom. Oh, <laughs> check it. You know, checkmate. It, yeah, it, it takes time and energy. So if I'm going to make art just for the art, I'll make the thing I want to make. Like um, every single time, like I did years working for commissions, did working for other people. Every commission, like well, not every commission, but a lot, a lot of the commissions I did, they took a little piece of my soul away. <laughs> just a little piece in it. Just a little bit, but it adds up. And you keep on like, Dealing with the, the type of person that would say that to you, it's going to take pieces of your soul away. <laughs> and that's less of your own work that you're going to do, man. I, I can actually uh, commiserate with you on that. You know, you, we've, we've had some private exchanges where I've shared some stuff where I'm like, oh, this job is killing me. And then 
bless you, Ryan, because you said when you're done with this job, your next project is going to be so awesome because you're going to pour everything you've got into it because all those little bits of your soul are going to come back, you know, through your own personal work again. Uh, which which helped me keep going during that that uh, project, but yeah, yeah, um, I can I can attest to that that when you are working with one of those kinds of clients or uh, collaborators, it does chip away at you after a while. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to start somewhere though, Ryan. Jeez, for crying out loud! It's like you're fresh out of art school. What do you want? A contract to, for a multi graphic novel deal? Who do you think you are, man? You got to pay your dues. Here's the first one: my project, your due. Yeah. Why not my project? <laughs> Everybody has projects they want to do. And if you're just starting out, like that's the time to freaking start on them because you, you have that passion. You haven't had these people chip away at your soul yet and you still have enough soul that you can be like, let's just do it. Yeah. But like, <laughs> um, you're later on after you, these people have chipped away at your soul. You're going to wish that you had the time to make your own art. And you're not going to be able to do it because you're going to be so like behind on all these deadlines you have and like bills you have to pay and that you can't pay because these people won't pay you. And even the people who offer you pay aren't going to send you the pay that they owe you. And just just get your own stuff done, man. Do it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's another thing. Uh, I don't know if you've ever watched the news. Uh, I watch the broadcast news a lot, and uh, besides saying that you know that people are trying to break into your house and Action News is on your side, and people are trying to rip you off at the store and Action News is on your side, the other thing they talk about a lot is this thing called the job burglar, and the job burglar is out there stealing everybody's jobs, and there's no jobs in these troubled economic time economic times. Nobody's making any money. Eighty eight percent of America is unemployed. Why I can't, you know, trouble, trouble times. I can't pay you. You, you understand how it is, right? No monies anywhere. Economy. Sounds like a really perfect time for me to not make any money and <laughs> spend all my time not looking for a job. Then, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so you're saying that if I say troubled economic times, nobody has any jobs. Work for me, then. I'm yeah. offering you a job. It doesn't pay. But hey, at least you got something not, safe for the job not burglar. Really a job. Uh, that's 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 an interesting point. Um, mm-hmm. I want to double back on something because while we I was doing the show prep for this, uh, something came across my Twitter feed from Aaron Diaz of Dresden Kodak. Dresden Kodak on the Twitters, he said, "Artists charging for your work does not lessen your art. The culture of doing it for the sake of art was explicitly created to exploit you." You think it was really explicitly created to exploit people? I wonder if it was. Mm. It's it's an interesting combative statement that gets us fired yeah. up, but yeah. But uh, like the that it specifically was started to be used in the way that it is today in order to do that. But you know, I mean, there there's always been the like you know the um like the Bill Watterson type that wants to separate money as much from it as possible. Um, can we talk about that for a second? Because that's something I put in my notes too. There was that Zen pencils thing that we got passed around like crazy on the internet and it really ticked some people off. Um, you know, for a lot of different reasons. I mean, I think one of the reasons was, is that, and this is at zenpencils.com. Uh, it'll be linked in the show notes. Uh, somebody took a Bill Watterson speech and did a comic as an homage to Bill Watterson's style, uh, a comic version of the speech. And I think some people were angry because, like, well, if you don't know any better, you'd think Bill Watterson drew it. So it's kind of like associating oneself with Bill Watterson in a way that's a little weird. Uh, but what I thought was really interesting was the David Willis short-packed response. Did you get to see that at all? Yeah. Yeah, and i I'm, I got to pull it up because what he responded to, literally the speech was about, like, don't. Don't sell out. Uh, do the art that pleases you. And if that means, I, I hope I'm summarizing this properly, yeah. if that means taking a job that's less demanding uh, in order to have the time and energy to work on the art that you're passionate about, so be it. Getting up the corporate ladder does, uh, if at the expense of your art isn't the path to take. And it shows the guy like quitting his like corporate ad design job to be a stay-at-home dad while his wife goes out and makes the money. Um, then David Willis pulls does this uh, comic where he says money is evil and art is pure, and so getting paid to do ar- art from uh, a company that uh, a boss or a boss or anything like that makes you history's greatest monster. 
<laughs> and he was clearly responding to the message that, that yeah. you know, suggesting that somehow um, getting paid for your art is a dirty thing. And this is an interesting thing that comes around and around and around. It's like, why do you think artists are so skittish about associating value with their art? Because artists are all awkward. <laughs> I don't know. They're just um, like they're, they're a lot of people just kind of feel guilty about the the fact that like the people that are successful, I think kind of feel guilty about the fact that they get to do what they love. And but they forget the the years of hard work and toil they put into doing things they don't love to get to the point where they could do things that they love. You know, I don't know. Yeah, there's there's. um and this is, again, going back to Eli Nyberger, something he said on one of the shows I did, I think it was on the Kids Comics Revolution, is that there's an old, um, what do I want to say, there's, 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 there's this old idea that persists today that you're not learning if you're not, if, if you're enjoying it. If you're having mm -hmm. fun, there's no learning involved in this experience. And so, too, it's like when we say, people say, well, is this work or play? There's a, there's this binary thing that that somehow came about in the 20th century where you work and you hate it but you do it because you got to do it and then you play when you're at home and it's trivial and it means nothing to anybody except you, um, which also has some kind of like denigrating yeah. quality to it, right? Well, one of the things about making art though is that enjoying it is actually hard work. <laughs> like you get in, in things where like you've been working on something for a long time and you you're not feeling it and thought because of that the art isn't going well. And you actually have to stop and think, I have to start enjoying this more. And like I said, it's hard work to get to that point. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. This is another reason that I get really um, edgy about the word talent. I know mm -hmm. talent is a thing, and I know that an innate ability to do something helps. But whenever somebody sees me do what I do, like people see me sketching at a convention or something, and they'll be like, oh, you're so talented, as if... I just came fully formed into this thing, never minding like the years and years of toil. Not that they necessarily need to see that, you know. It's like uh, going back to the Chuck Jones thing. It's like uh, it should be what ninety percent blood and tears and five percent or no ninety. I don't know. He worked out some percentage of like the blood, sweat, and tears and the love, and he said, but the audience should only see the love, right? Mm -hmm. I get that, but it the the talent thing. I think also. Mm, misdirects us from the fact that this is torture sometimes. It is mm -hmm. a lot of hard work, especially when you're trying to do something that means something to you. Um, okay, let's double back and let's close on the redefinitions that you came up with. So, exposure. I said the word exposure. You should get excited. What, what does that mean? Yeah, what, what, what the redefinitions that we're talking about, like a, I, I've noticed in these ads, there's a lot of words that they've kind of these people have taken as their own and given their own definitions. When they say exposure, what they're they're talking about it as though it's something tangible that they can bequeath upon you and it'll lead to fame and wealth. Uh, when in actuality, first of all, as I said, when you expose yourself, you're only exposing yourself as someone who works for free. And um, anyone who wants to give you work based on that project alone will expect you to work for free as well. And finally, they can't give you the exposure only the uh audience can do that it's their decision if they're gonna notice and or care who made the thing and the way it's presented and sold by the uh person is kind of what rides on who sees it and can make that decision i'm reminded of the lean into art cast that you were just on mm -hmm. lean into art cast episode 84 mm -hmm. uh strangely enough where we talked about making virals right yeah uh only the audience can decide if it goes viral yeah uh, up front, you know, why, why this, you know, when you go to work at Burger King, you don't get paid up front. So why should you get paid up front to do this art? Yeah. Someone sent me a message and said, what, in what other business do people get paid up front? And I suddenly realized that they, like, they'd even gotten me to start thinking of up front the way they did. Cause, um, when they're saying there's no upfront pay, what they're meaning is, um, what it means in these ads is that. Later on down the line, if uh, if some money somehow falls in our lap, I'll, I'll give you some of it. <laughs> uh, which is means they have absolutely no business plan whatsoever and no money is ever coming. And if it does, they have no reason to give it to you because they already know you'll work for free. Um, but um, if you have... 
Yeah, like in other businesses, people don't get paid before they do the work, but they do know that they will be paid. Like when you work for McDonald's, they don't say, here's your week's pay, go make some burgers. But they say, this is how much we'll pay you per hour after you make those burgers. And if they, for example, introduce a new item, like if they reintroduce the McRib and no one buys it, you still get paid for the ones that you made. It's not like in what they expect you in a comic, whereas, oh, you drew this 700 uh page per volume 10 volume manga for me but no one bought it so I guess sorry you get paid just yeah. on a shelf yeah the mcrib was a flop so all you guys who made them don't get paid now <laughs> mm-hmm. uh okay well you know i'm i'm diy uh don't you want to be part of the diy movement make magazine maker fair hey I've seen I, I see DIY on so many ads and I can't figure out what they think it means because the the three word like the letters are there it stands for do it yourself <laughs> so why am I involved in this DIY movement here I don't understand why you need me if you're doing it yourself they're being charmingly ironic <laughs> <laughs> I'm DIY so you do it for me yeah. uh, well okay consider it an internship. You know, mm-hmm. interns, you bring them in, they do the work for you, and they don't get paid. Why should you get paid? Yeah, I, I, well, for, there, there's a lot of arguments already uh, in law, people trying to pass laws about internships to begin with, in that uh, people are abusing the word internship and making their interns do work that they should be paid for, and that's technically illegal. But in a lot of these ads, it seems like they're just people who have heard the word intern. And maybe saw movies that have interns in them, and they're like, "Well, shoot, bro, why don't you be my intern? I need an intern to design my logo." It's like that's not <laughs> what an internship is. An internship is a thing set up through a school, and I go through certain times instead of going to a classroom. And you teach me things, and I watch how you work, and I learn how the ins and outs of business are. But I, I see ads that are like, um, "We need an intern. We have no time for beginners. You better be a professional." What? Yeah. <laughs> what? That's not. Maybe use a dictionary on that one. Exactly. Yeah. Like when when my interns graduate school, and I do take on interns when they're in school, and then the moment they graduate, if they want to stick around and keep doing stuff for me, they become a production assistant, and then we mm-hmm. negotiate pay. And now mm-hmm. you're a paid production assistant, no longer an intern. But for the very reasons you just described. And yeah, yeah, you, there should be something where I'm teaching you something through our work relationship rather than uh, I'm bringing an intern, draw this 50 page graphic novel for me. And, mm-hmm. and I'll just tell you when you're doing it wrong. <laughs> That's a learning experience, I guess. There you go. Uh, hey, everybody. We had a software uh, malfunction, and Matt is feverishly and heroically working to get all the plugs back where they go. Okay. All right, here we go. Take two. So Lunch Lady, of course, is a perfect school book um, with the heroine Lunch Lady who always finds evil criminal people infiltrating the schools. The villains are always characters who, who kids might encounter at the school, exactly. too, right? Exactly. Yeah, this one's about a visiting author who has a history at the school and a certain vendetta that he's returned for this particular visit. So yeah. um, this one's a lot of fun. And, of course, I brought along Mal and Chad, Belly Flop. Steve McCraney. And, yep. And um, this is all about a school talent show. And how Mal isn't exactly enthused about doing a stupid talent show until he decides that maybe um, he needs to impress the other students and kind of get their, I don't know, their approval. And so he goes ahead and conjures up a rather interesting show piece, but in the background is the storyline that begins the book where he has created a weather cube, a weather Mm. cube that can do rather interesting things. We should say, yes, he is uh, a a mad scientist eight-year-old. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so a like a genius, a genius. So anytime yes. he gets involved in like regular school events, like a talent show or like 
I don't know, a field trip, it's always going to get crazy because he does these mad scientist stuff. And the great thing about it is Chad, um, his dog, is just the most awesome (laughs) pull-him-out-at-the-last-minute kind of guy. And the last one really isn't school-based, but it makes me think of when I was a kid. It's called Tales of the Brothers Three, Mustaches, Monsters, and Other Hairy Situations. This is kind of taking me back to my childhood of watching my three sons Mm. and um, these three brothers there's Keith who's the oldest he's the he's the mature one that wears a shirt tie and sweater vest all the time and thinks the others are kind of nerdy but then there's Wayne and Wayne is um, constantly conjuring up all sorts of um, evil or not evil sometimes they are but um (laughs) fantastical adventures and then there's Dougie the little the littlest brother who sometimes gets pulled into the shenanigans of the other two um, these are wonderful little vignettes I just laugh every time I flip through and um, read it and we had we had Joshua Joshua come to Did Kids Read Comics? Comics and yep I totally I got to meet at least one brother and dad and mom. Oh, who are, cool! Who are also part of the whole comic strip. So oh, Josh was awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's a good book. Uh, people can check it out. We'll link to it in the show notes. You mentioned mm-hmm. my three sons. I'm going to ask you a squishy question. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh, Greg Shegel of St- the Stuff Said Show is in the chat. Stuff Said Show, by the way, everybody, everybody should watch it or listen to it. It's a great podcast. Uh, StuffSaidShow.com. Uh, and he said he always likes it when I ask the squishy question. So here it is: my three sons, uh, William Frawley. Or William Demarest as Uncle Charlie. I guess I thought it was Demarest, but boy, oh boy, you're really asking the brain to go back a few decades. Was it Frawley? Do we know? Uh, yeah, from I Love Lucy. Uh, yeah. Fred Mertz. Yeah, he started out as the uncle on the show. And then later on, William Demarest took it over. Okay, so I was too young when <laughs> Frawley was on. I don't, I don't, I, I, I was an infant. I wouldn't have heard it. Oh, see, <laughs> I, I watch it all on YouTube, so it's, okay. it's not an age thing for me. But anyway, okay, Ryan, we can talk about your book recommendations. <laughs> all right. Um, well, the first one I have, this ju- just came in the mail today, is Nothing is Forgotten by Ryan Andrews. Ooh. Uh, this is finally printed from his Kickstarter. And, uh, fitting to talk about this seeing as we just heard that uh, Miyazaki uh, is retiring and this dude is the next Miyazaki. His Whoa. work is very, for, like, just outstanding work and especially the attention to detail and care like that he puts in his work, he, like just in designing this book, like the, the flaps are amazing, like look, look at all the detail and the, oh, wow. the trees and everything and the um, like the the, the the copyright page is amazing look, look at the little oh, copy. Oh my gosh information going under his little umbrella and it's just this book is just a series of uh short stories that he's done over the years um just amazingly beautiful art some of them are like wordless and silent uh some of them have uh dialogue um just a lot of different really cool stories and just beautiful artwork yeah um Nothing is Forgotten by Ryan Andrews. This is an older book that I just happened to pick up at a used bookstore mm. called Korea Unmasked. Um, and it's actually, this is one of the few books of this guy's that have been translated into English. Um, it's part of a series that he did, uh, one of like every country. He's done about 10 countries so far, I think. And it's just kind of like understanding comics, but about countries. Um, and... Like I said, this one's about Korea, and it kind of talks about the differences between Korea and Japan uh, and China, Uh, but in a way that even if you're not going to Korea, basically it's a book about how cultures develop, Um, because like there's a whole chapter on the differences in the length of chopsticks between China, Korea, and Japan, and you'd be like, why would I care about that? And he goes on to explain why there are those different lengths, and it describes their entire history and why the people are the way they are. Wow. And uh, his name is Wan Bok Ri, or Iwan Bok. And uh, he does so many books about, he some books about like mythology and finance and all the stuff that hmm. if more of his books were translated into English, I would be a lot smarter because he takes <laughs> complicated ideas and 
basically does a understanding comics version of that. Wow. So like like uh, Harry Gonick's Cartoon History of the Universe, but yeah. in the humanities, right? Mm -hmm. uh, very cool. Or social sciences, for that matter. Mm -hmm. uh, very cool. Um, are we also going to talk about your This Is How You Die contribution? Well, yeah, the, the the last two, I have two books that aren't comics, but they're uh, involving a lot of comics people. Um, this yeah. is How You Die is the new Machine of Death collection. Uh, one of my stories is in there. There's a bunch of stories by different uh, cartoonists, and uh, each one's illustrated by different web cartoonists and people. And uh, if you haven't read the first Machine of Death, you can get that uh, an ebook free on uh, the website, um, machineofdeath.net. Uh, and this new one was released by Grand Central Publishing and just really good stories. Um, the idea is that it's a world where there's a machine that will tell, it'll just spit out a card that'll say in just one or a few words how you will die. It won't say when it'll happen and it won't say, it, it, it'll be maybe very vague, it may be very specific, but just kind of... When I first heard about that idea, I thought it would just be a lot of like Twilight Zone esque like twist ending, like oh I, I misunderstood the card and it was a pun. Um, but what, like the first book kind of became about uh, how knowledge affects uh, affects people, and this one is more about how knowledge affects society because it just takes all aspects of society and shows how it would affect them. Mm. And the last one is To Be or Not To Be by Ryan North, uh, who does dinosaur comics. And it's a choose-your-own-adventure version of Hamlet that is just um, <laughs> like he has reinvented the choose-your-own-adventure genre because every single path you could possibly take is just a am completely different amazing story in this book. And like I said, there's a lot of really great illustrations by uh, different people in web comics, and it's all full-color illustrations. Wow. And, Lots of fun adventures. Those are my picks. The, those both started as Kickstarter. Well, no. Machine of Death did not start as a Kickstarter, did it? No. But To Be or Not To Be was a, a, a pretty successful yeah. Kickstarter campaign. Uh, well, cool. I, I brought, I'll brought. i save mine for next time because uh, I did not expect to have so many great book recommendations on the show, and I just don't want to empty the clip. You know what I did forget? What? Well, what? I, on my school theme, one of my favorite school graphic novels is Aki Alliance. Oh, yeah, which and you can get for free. Absolutely. Yeah, I was I was laughing through that this morning could again. You, could you book talk that real quick? Oh, Aki is just a hoot. She's a girl <laughs> who's moved. Um, she's a new student at a school, and she has jumped in into all these clubs and then kind of become bored and backed out. And consequently, everyone at the school's mad at her. And um, she takes on a bet from one of the fellow students to um, that she cannot possibly make friends with all these girls who are mad at her. And she takes on that challenge, and she she has a ball. It's mm -hmm. hilarious, just hilarious. I love the boxing match and Scrabble. That's one of my favorite <laughs> episodes. <laughs> it's a great comic. And yeah, get it a, a retina version for your iPad at uh, ryanestrada.com in the comics section. And I would love to hold it someday up for the camera, Ryan. You know, like I got I got Korean editions here. But Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> not English. Okay. But uh, but thank you, Ryan, for taking the time to mm -hmm. be with us today and 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 battled me on this topic. I think I think you 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 won. I'll I'll grant you that at this time, Ryan. I beat Evil Jersey. You beat Evil Jersey to the ground. He's <laughs> screaming for Uncle Uncle Charlie. Uh, and Sharon, thank you for hanging sure. out. Any any comics we, things going we on? We have this coming Sunday um, the first comics forum here at the downtown library, right here outside our studio on fourth floor downtown library. Joshua Buchanan will be coming in to talk about um, how to bring life into your characters. Uh, Joshua Buchanan, who uh, worked on the Scratch Nine comic That's with Rob right. Worley, uh, yep. uh, Michigan staple of mm -hmm. uh, you can find him at just about any convention you go to in Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, great guy. Uh, it'll be good. It'll be a good event. And uh, that's the first Sunday of the month, one to three p.m. Fourth floor at right. the downtown Ann Arbor District Library. You can go to comics.aadl.org to find out mm -hmm. more. Okay, cool. Uh, Ryan, anything else that you wanted to promote while you're here? Anything people should check Ryan out? Ryanstrada.com. Just Ryanstrada.com. <laughs> uh, everybody should look at that website because that is the perfect landing page. To I, I got to rip off a lot of those ideas there so that I can just say comicsagreat.com and then you get a one like one window with everything you need to know about me. Um, 
And then also check out leanintoart.com with Ryan's appearance on there where we talked about making a viral because that was a really good discussion too. So, uh, Okay, well, thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks to the guys at the control room for putting the show together every couple <laughs> weeks. It's not easy. It is not easy, especially when the cords burst and water gets all over the, the tanks and it's like a, a bad episode of uh, the original Star Trek series. Uh, and thanks everybody watching live. The show will be archived at comicsagreat.com slash CAG84. If you enjoyed it, a way you could... Uh, here's a free thing I will ask for that costs you nothing and takes very little time. This really does. You can go to iTunes, give a star review. You can give a thumbs up on the YouTube video. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, or you can tell a friend. Comicsagreat.com uh, is a fun thing to look at. So until next time, everybody, I have been Jersey Droz of Comicsagreat.com and Jersey on Twitter. Jersey Droz on Google+. Okay, bye.